In oil painting, we've been looking at uh, the journey to abstraction with three artists, Vasily Kandinsky, Franz Marc and Auguste Mack. And this is an image based loosely on ideas from Marc. And it's around this time when these artists were experimenting with uh, realism that's becoming abstract. So it's not completely abstract, but it is, it is there are elements there that are going that way. And I was hoping we could combine this with colour theory and the idea that um, opposite colours darken. So yellow and violet red, for example, or orange red and blue yellow. When you mix these incrementally, a little bit of that in here makes this, a little bit of that in here makes that, and so on. And you can do that with um, so that's a watercolour one, you can do it with oils and make a chart like this. And I tried to make this chart with orange and blue and base some of my ideas uh, around orange and blue, red and green, or pink and green also, and yellow and violet combinations. So I've got this um, uh, theory which I'm trying to put into practice with colour, and it all comes from the colour wheel where you have originally the three primary colours, then secondary colours, and all the mixtures that lie in between. And anywhere opposite on the colour wheel, we find complementary pairs that will make, can be mixed to darken colour. Another element to the colour wheel is um, a pair of colour, uh, primary colours, and their products make what's known as harmon harmonious colours. So, uh, blue and red and all the violets and uh, yellow and red and all the oranges and yellow and green, blue and all the greens. So there'll be elements of harmonious colour and elements of uh, complementary colours. It all means on the palette the discipline of keeping these colours separate from each other. So this is my palette and I'm trying to keep these colours from not getting muddy not becoming muddy, keeping them little mixtures separate, not using any water. This is these are artisan um, colours. So I've got brushes, separate brushes, more or less one for each uh, colour. And I was interested in the greens that the blue greens that could work around this um, red orange. Um, yeah, so I've got a little bit more of a blue-green, for example. I drew these pigs out and then divided the drawing up into segments or sections with sort of curving shapes, um, not really based on any regular pattern, trying to avoid, uh, I suppose, symmetry or repetition as well. Well, I've got this, these slight variations on blue-green, so I'm going to try. So I'm not going to deliberately try to not repeat uh, a colour. So each each time I put down a colour, I'm hoping it won't be like a colour. It's not quite like any colour anywhere else. So yellow and blue that would make a very light. Sort of yellow green, lots of white in that. This is quite a neat way of painting, I suppose. Not not a, I don't mean um, uh, fashionable. I meant um, careful. I suppose it's careful in that replacing colour, specific colour in one place, and leaving it, uh, not doing very much blending. So any mixing that occurs is mixing in the eye. From a distance. Let's have a look at this. So this animal I was painting with permanent rose and ultramarine and white um, and that gives a series of pinks and mauves. And again if I try not to make the colour the same, so I'm looking at variety in either blue or warm blue, which is ultramarine, and a little bit of um, permanent rose. That makes an opposite colour. Just trying to draw into that with the filbert brush. 
for the orange because blue and orange are complementary so vaguely blue and um, or mauve blue and orange are also uh, complementary colours discipline then, keeping the brushes separate that's a challenge for this uh, process and having brushes that sort of the right size too that will work into smaller spaces like this um, so permanent rows it's quite a deliberate process on the palette deciding what to mix and where to put the colour a little bit of pink colour there bright pink and possibly there too although that's got a little bit of blue dragged up into it and Mark did use dark edges and dark lines in his um, paintings this has got some edges around the animal but it doesn't have um, quite as many dark lines in the drawing between all these divisions of between colours or patches of colour so that's meant to be a little bit darker perhaps there that's that's rather similar to another area there so I might try and put that colour in there let's make it a bit different to the surrounding colours compared with the surrounding colours um, so this is gradually, gradually taking shape let's put that there and a little bit of bright blue darker blue um, let's go for a deeper magenta colour just there, that's a slightly different colour and possibly there too and even deeper violet colour in there possibly at the moment I'm just looking at the relationship between the colours and the relationship of one animal's colours scheme adjacent to another I don't really uh, can't anticipate too much because this could change so being oil paint possible to repaint this, possible to paint over colours that you think well that colour doesn't seem right there so a lot of this is intuitive but the, um, the discipline of mixing these uh, separate colours and keeping the colours clean so I'm trying to avoid mud for example that's the challenge of making this painting as well as investigating colour theory blue green it's going to be blue green up there so I've looked at Franz Marc's paintings I've looked at Auguste Mack's paintings and I liked uh, this image of uh, by Mack and all these shapes that he's used behind here And that, I think, that's why I've drawn these sort of semicircular umbrella shapes in the background. So I suppose it does help visually <coughs> to make the background cooler. Cooler in terms of colour means more towards blue or blue greens. Another little bit of blue green see if I can change that, so I'm just altering this colour with the one brush as I'm going see if I can paint into these remaining shapes and keep the colour pure but also altered not the same so it's not, not quite the same as what was there before or rather not quite the same as its neighbours not quite the same colour <clears throat> ultramarine blue and cerulean blue mixed together with a tiny bit of 
yellow. That is something that would complement orange quite well. So there are elements of brush control there, trying to keep the brush into that area, not <coughs> uh, stray out of it. You continue to build this up. Redraw that shape a little bit while I get the opportunity. That's the great thing about oil paint is the chance to redraw, uh, re repaint even, repaint this little area. Use the paint thickly. Just use the brush gently to build that up. So I'm just refining the the drawing of that foot. Let's see if I can paint into some other shapes. So that foot, the trotter, just comes in there somewhere. And colour, colour, colour. This is all about pure colour, so it means going back to the tube and finding the brightness necessary. It's going to be a little bit bluer. And bluer. So is there a, a logic to this? Perhaps in only in the sense of trying to not to put the same colour next to another colour so that the colours are different from their neighbours. Let's try and use that somewhere else. So the opposite of violet is yellow, so it would be it would work better for this painting if the colours around this animal were towards yellow green and the colours around this animal were towards blue green. So yellow green in theory, I overpaint this patch here, is going to complement a mauve purple better than something that's rather harmonious to it, which is that that, that colour that was there. That's rather similar. Let's put something more yellow green. Into those little negative shapes. White plus yellow green obviously becomes paler. Let's try and put some there. It's a whiter yellow green. Just correct that drawing at the same time. Put that there. Yellow green. So I'm hoping what emerges is a sense of the shapes of these creatures, but in a sort of abstract uh, sea of colour. It's too similar. Too much the same. But yellow green. Yellow green can have a little red in it to turn the green golden. Golden yellow green or golden yellow. Something like that. So that's got a little bit of red. I've been red in the yellow green mix. Separate brush back to something a little bit darker. Mix 
these greens together. Have a look at that little patch there. Very light pressure on the brush. This paper, this surface has been nicely primed with um, PVA and acrylic primer, so it takes the colour quite well. I suppose these are vaguely landscape colours. So I'm going to come back to this in a minute and uh, show the next, the next stage. And I'm hoping this makes sense, this idea of there's a sort of flow through here with the drawn line over the drawing of the animals. And some logic to the, to the um, theory of colour based around the colour wheel and uh, complementaries. And really what has to be said is a and more of an intuitive approach to this. What colour looks good visually? What colour do you feel looks good next to the colour you just put on there? And if it's not, it doesn't seem right, then the great thing about oil paint is you can change it. You can paint it over, build it up. In all of this, the colours, I'm still, hopefully, I am trying to keep to colours that are fairly clean colours. They're not um, getting too sort of darkened or corrupted.